It's April and the blue wing ollies are hatching, Mickey, here on the Provo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But not yet. Not yet, that's right. We're here a little early. Yeah. Mid-afternoon. Yeah, let's try the Euro rods for a little bit first. Yeah, a few uh, months ago, almost maybe a year or two ago, we went out with Lance, learned a little bit about Euro nymphing, and so uh, we're gonna see if the students learned anything. See if it still works. <laughs> yeah. It still works, huh? It still works. All right. I think right here. Okay. Mickey, Euro nymphing has just taken off. It's the rage. Everybody wants to learn how to do it. How do you rig it? How do you fish it? One of the key things that makes your nipping so much different is the length of the leader. It's a 20 foot leader. And the reason you got that 20 foot leader is you don't want any sag in your line. You want it to be straight. What that's going to tell you is the slightest hit. Got one. Nice Good one. Good fish. Nice brown trout. <laughs> nice. What was that? Four casts? Flies are working. Good start to the morning. And what do people need to understand about the technique? Well, I think probably the, the number one mistake of what I see is trying to hold the rods way up in the air. You don't need to? No, you don't. Try to get the slack out with your left hand. Okay. So as soon as it's in the water, the slack's out. So as soon as it's here, I'm tight. I'm already ready to go and I'm already fishing it. The drift is really important when you're Euro nipping. You're not pulling the line, but you're letting them move at the speed of the current. And the current's different underneath than it is on top. So if you have a, a strike indicator, that's gonna drag your flies. If you're bottom bouncing, then you're gonna anchor your flies. So this is kind of fishing the mid range. We're not necessarily always trying to hit the bottom. There we go. Nice. Little brown trout. What's fun about Euro nymph fishing too, I think, is you're always in contact with your nymphs, right, Mick? Right. So you're always fishing. You're, there's no slack. You're not having to worry about your indicator spooking them. You're always in contact with your flies. You're going to adjust your flies depending on the water. Nice little fish. You can use different weights, and you're going to set them up on your rig in different places. He took the upper fly. If you need both flies to go down, the fly closest to the tip of the rod is called the lead fly. Fly farthest away is called the point fly. If you need both flies to get down deep, your heaviest weight is the highest up, and that'll pull them both down at the same depth. If you have a hatch coming on, and you know that there's a lot of stuff mid-range, then you're gonna switch that around. You're gonna put your heavy fly down on the bottom and your light fly up on top. The nymphs we're using don't look like anything. They're just big size 12 to 14 attractors. But what Euro nymphing does is it puts the nymph in the perfect drift. And fish are opportunistic feeders. They just can't refuse them if they look natural. Another one. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. I might need help with this one, Mick. This is bottom fly. Yeah, this is this is a solid fish. He won't come up. Might be a whitey. He's staying down. Oh, he's taking you down. White fish are fun. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, get me out of those trees. Come on, don't go over there. There he comes. I think he's getting tired now. Come on. Oh, it's a big old white fish. Dude, that is a giant white fish for this part of the river. Look at that. I know Mickey always says, don't poo-poo the white fish. That's why. That is excitement. That is up there. Strong. Strong. Oh, that thing gave that rig a ride. He's beat up a little bit, isn't he? He's an old fish. That is an old fish. Just a pig. It's a little bit different rig to, to cast. It's nasty casting. It's hard. <laughs> but that's what these rods are designed to do. These rods are so flexible that they cast with no weight at all. They don't need the weight of a fly line to help load the rod. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Can I just use my regular rod to do it? Yes and no. Yes and no. Casting gets really hard with the regular rod because they are too stiff. Oh yeah, thanks Mick. He was taking me for a run. <laughs> That's a pretty fish. That is this really river? pretty fish. I mean, you can go anywhere. There's, I keep walking down, there's more fish downstream too. Wow, there's a bunch on that flat, Mick. I just saw like seven rise. Well, this is what we're waiting for. This is a blue wing olive. And that's the fly Mickey has tied up for us in size 20. There he is. First cast. <laughs> First cast. 
Blue wings will start hatching mid to late morning. By noon, it can be a full-on feeding frenzy. Got him. This little uh, sparkle bait is your sparkle bed. <laughs> Lightning, we, yeah, we probably shouldn't be here. Fish is too good to leave, though. <laughs> Yeah, like that. Wow. We're doing this for a fish. There's fish all over here. So not you don't have to go very far. There's there's good ones. Well, you'll see them. There we go, little guy. So I hadn't had a hit, and I kept tangling up. Mickey finally gave me the right fly. Second cast. First little fish. Booing Olive Day, they are just popping like popcorn. Nice little brown trout. We wanted that, they are just going after it. First one on Booing Olive this year. I think this setup, uh, when you're using stuff this little, can make a difference too. I'm having six X. Fluorocarbon too. Yeah. Because the nylon will actually kind of float on the surface. And anywhere it touches the surface makes a dimple, and you got a dotted line all the way to your fly. It makes your fly look this long. But the uh, fluorocarbon sinks. So it means your fly's gonna get a little bit wetter, but with it sinking, it doesn't cast that same shadow. Catching so, more fish. It's, yeah. It's catching a lot of fish. There's a lot of it. They're like boiling out there. He's on. I saw him flash at it, and I was like, oh, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Being able to see her fly helps. I saw him <laughs> yeah. come up. I just thought, ah, yeah, he's just coming up, taking a look. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Boy, there are just lots of little brown trout in here. Eager, plentiful. Let's find a big one now. Daddy. Nice. <laughs> he rose just now. I just saw him, so I had to make that short cast, see if I could get him. When you get this many fish, check your knots just over and over again. Yeah. The knots wear out, especially like in the eye of the fly moving around, it just wears out. You'll cut it off once more when we tie it. Okay. It's been a phenomenal day. It's been a lot of fun. Oh yeah, he knew it. He tried shaking it out right in the last second. This is fast. I mean, this is crazy fast fishing. It's a little better fish. That's a good fish. Yeah, he's a good one. He's camera worthy. We'll skate him in here. Pretty, pretty brown trout. A little skinny, but just gorgeous fish. Seen some bigger ones in here. Just haven't been able to get them to hit yet, but these little 14 to 16 inch fish are all over it. Nothing more pretty than a brown trout. All right, buddy, let's get you out of here. You're wearing the hat, you're throwing the rod. What the heck is an R8? All right, that's the latest technology. These rods are amazing. Yeah. This is, uh, we used them for the, our classes, and the accuracy is unbelievable. And that's what's really changed on these brand new ones. What have they changed about to make it so? Now it's the core. Okay. The main thing is the, the fiber alignment. They, the main fibers run the length of the rod. Bonding fibers go around the rod so you don't get a side to side wobble. But then they change the core so it doesn't compress like the old tubular cores do. So it recovers so fast that you can be really accurate. <laughs> right over my head. Rod to rod. <laughs> At least you don't call it a pole. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the best day I've ever had on the on the Lord Robo. That Mexico. was a great day. Yeah. And I, I am gonna take a little credit being a good guy. <laughs> you were pretty good. <laughs> Tied all the flies on. Um, the Euro rig, the Euro nymphing is a lot of fun. People, like we said earlier, they need to come into the shop if they're interested in how to rig it up, how to fish it. Yeah, and I'd be more than happy to help any way I can. Okay. There's a lot of little tricks, and uh, I'd like to pass those on. Yeah, I'm learning every time I go out with either you or Lance. Learning something new every time. Yeah. Hey, and the fish for garbage guys. What a turnout, even on a cold, snowy day. Oh, look at this. The sad thing is they've already got one big dumpster full. The other one's getting full. Yeah. It's kind of sad how much is here. It's always a good time on the lower Provo, a river that gets Love to death. 
But it's so worth it. Amazing fishing. Yeah, amazing fishing. Hey, I'm Adam Meek, along with my good buddy Mickey Anderson, reminding you to get out with your family and your friends, make some memories, like on the Lower Provo Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.